You know, we've been enjoying looking at the graphs of functions and seeing a visualization of an interesting formula or interesting equation. But in fact, when you look at the totality of the formula, which is done through a graph, it turns out we can get a global sense of values, values attained and values allowed. And those are actually called the domain and the range. The domain really just means the allowable x values, the x values that are permissible. And the range literally are uh, the collection of all values of y that are attained. So what y values do we hit? So visually, it's actually really kind of fun and clear how to proceed. Let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at this nice, beautiful parabola here. In fact, let's bring out the little virtual Professor Berger to look. Ooh! And he's very excited to see the parabola. But the question that he really wants to ask is, what are all the allowable x values in this parabola? Well, the way you could think about that is just ask, you know, what x values are permissible? Well, if you look at the graph, the graph even though it gets getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it goes further and further out to the right, and it goes further and further out to the left, and it has all these points in between. So in fact, every single x value is allowable. Think about the corresponding equation for uh, a parabola, and you'll see that it's going to be a quadratic. And a quadratic, you can take any number you want, and you can certainly square it, and you can then add or subtract a constant times the number again, and then add another constant, and it's totally fine. So in fact, here, the domain is the entire uh, real numbers. And the way I'd write that, in case you want to write that down, in fact, maybe the Professor Berger wants to watch this. Here we go. I'd say that the domain is, in fact, all the, the real numbers. And so I would say you can go from minus infinity all the way to infinity. Now, of course, infinity and minus infinity aren't numbers. So even this little fake Professor Berger knows that we have to just kind of grab them with these open parentheses because it means we can go as far as you want, but there's no such thing as infinity as a number. So we write it this way. That's the domain. Now, what about the range? Well, the range is a similar question, but the range asks what y values are attained. So now you want to look at the y-axis and say, OK, uh, what are the y values that, that are actually going to be used here? And you see, for example, that all these y values here are used somewhere, either this side or this side of the graph. So all these y values are used. And it goes further and further, higher and higher up forever. But what about as you come down? Well, these y values are met. These y values are met. These y values, oops, and here's negative 4. And look what happens. Beyond negative 4, the graph no longer resides. So there's no red below negative 4, which means the domain, the range for this is going to be from negative 4 on up. So the range, or values hit, are going to be negative 4 and up. The one way to think about it, by the way, is just imagine taking all the, the red, beautiful curve and just squashing it against the y-axis and ask yourself, what gets hit? Well, what gets hit is uh, all the values from negative 4 on up. So the way I'd write that is I'd say that the range is going to be from negative 4 to infinity. And since I actually attain negative 4, I want to lasso that point with a square bracket. But of course, you can never touch infinity. So I write it like that. OK, that's the idea. Let's now try some really fast just to kind of get um, a sense of how to look at these. Here's a very interesting graph. It kind of looks like a parabola, but if you look really closely, you'll see, in fact, if Professor Berger looks really closely, he will see there's a hole actually right there. And so what does that mean? It means that the domain and the range are both going to be slightly different than the last example. So the domain are all the allowable x values. Imagine just taking the, the red graph and shkunk, just squishing it down to the x-axis. What gets hit? Well, everything will get hit with red, except here. There's no, that means there's a hole there, which means there will be a hole right at 0. So it's all the values that are not 0. And the way you'd write that is to say you can go from negative infinity all the way up to 0, and you can go from 0 all the way to infinity. But you can't include 0. So this means all numbers that are negative, all numbers that are positive, but you don't include that middle point of 0 because that's not allowed. And then you just take the union or put them all together and say that's the domain. What about the range? Well, the range, you'll notice, and if you look really closely, you'll see that if you squash against here, you get all the values as high as you want all the way down to negative 4. But this time, negative 4 is not included because negative 4, in fact, there's a hole right there. So that means that the range 
will be from negative four to infinity. We can never touch infinity, but now we can't even touch negative four. So we have to actually put an open parentheses there because there's a hole right there, but anything bigger than negative four is allowable. So that's another example. Let's try another one just for fun. I think they're kind of neat to see lots of crazy, crazy examples. Now when you look at this one, the little Professor Berger notices that there's a hole here. You can't help but notice the hole there. And so now let's think about the domain. The domain, think about just squashing everything to the x-axis or think about what are the allowable x values. And there's a hole right here, which happens, it looks like, at 1. So here I'd say that the uh, domain, you can go from negative infinity all the way up to 1, and you can go from 1 to infinity, but you can't touch any of them. You can't touch 1, and we take the union of those things and put them together. And what about the range? Well, now this is a little bit interesting. And even the stick Professor Berger is amused by this because when you squash everything to the y-axis, notice you get everything from negative 4 on up, and you might be worried about that hole. That hole is going to happen at a height of negative 3, but notice on this side, we have negative 3 covered. So in fact, the range are going to be all the values from negative 4 on up, and this hole has no effect because when you squash things down, this part actually fills in that hole. So it's a little tricky. While there is going to be a hole uh, in the uh, domain at 1, there's going to be no break in the range. The range is going to be one smooth thing from negative 4 to infinity, and do we include negative 4? We absolutely do, and so that's the, that's the range. That's the range. Let's try some more examples and uh, start to see what these look like. Here's a crazy one. Crazy functions, by the way, crazy functions. Well, what's the domain? Well, if you just kind of squash everything to the x-axis, what do you see? You see everything from, from negative 3 to 1. So negative 3 to 1, and there's nothing else anywhere else. I'm sorry, negative 2 to 1. Sorry, sorry, negative 2. I got distracted by the 3, the big 3 there. Negative 2, that's a negative 2 to 1, and nothing else. Do I include them? They're open circles. That means I do not include them, and so that is the domain. And what about the range? What are the allowable hit values? I hit as low as negative 4, and I hit as high up as this x-axis, which is y equals 0. So I go from negative 4 to 0, and what do I do? Do I include negative 4? I sure do. Do I include 0? No because there's a hole there. I don't actually hit it, and so that's the range. Okay, how about one last one? I know you want more, but I'm only going to give you one more. This one, notice the difference here is that now I see these red dots, which means that the holes are filled in. The holes are filled in, which means we include those points. So now what's the domain? Well, little Professor Berger comes out and says, no problem, I can look at this and see the domain goes from negative 2, negative 2, all the way to 1, and now I'm allowed to use those points. Those points get hit when I squash up to the x-axis, so I write it like this, and the range, what do I hit? I hit everything from negative 4 all the way to 0. That height, that highest point is at 0, it's the ground level, and I'm allowed to include it, and I'm allowed to include it, so there is the range. Excellent, excellent, excellent domains and ranges. And what I want us to think about now is this question. Let's actually just evaluate the function. Suppose this is f of x. So let's say that this is called y equals f of x. That's the graph. Now, what is f of negative 2? Well, we can read it off. If we go to negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, we see that the height is 0. This is a colored in circle right there. So it's a dot. What about f of 0? Well, that's when x equals 0. When x equals 0, I have to go all the way down the bottom floor negative 4, that's the very lowest part of our range. Then f of 1, f of 1 is what? f of 1 is negative 3, right? f of 1 is negative 3, no. Why? Because there's an open circle there, which means that that's a hole, which means this does not exist. Or is undefined, either way. Does not exist or undefined. And what about this question here? This is kind of the, kind of a, the question on its head. Find the x values for which the function equals negative 3. So find the x values for which the, 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 the target point is negative 3. So go to the y equals negative 3, which is right here. 
and ask, where does that happen? Well, it seems to happen at these two points, right? It seems to happen at negative one and at one, but notice there's an open circle there. So it's not happening in, at one, only at negative one. So this implies that x equals simply negative one. That's the only answer. It doesn't equal one because there's a hole there. Wow. Well, thinking about domains and ranges really um, uh, provides insight, not only into the equations and the formulas and the functions, but also into the graphs. It gives you a global sense of what's going on at all scales in the x direction, when you kind of imagine squashing everything down on the x-axis, and in the y direction, the values that get hit, and that's the range. And I hope you're comfortable there, because if you are, then I can say you're at home on the range. I'll see you soon.